Our website, channelcv.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch Channel Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser. Or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via your smart TV platforms on Apple TV, Android TV, Fire TV and Roku. Going to toss it over now to Malkwe Ogun Yusuf in Abuja for more on the News at 10. Hi Malkwe, great to see you. Hello, Amarachi. It's good to see you as well. Well, we begin from Kaduna State, where two abducted children of a medical doctor, Philip Ataga, have been released by their captors. Their father told our correspondent that the children were dropped by the kidnappers at Unguakati area along the Juji Bypass and were later picked up by one of his relatives who brought them home. The children and their mother, Bola Ataga, were abducted from their home at the Juji area of Chikun local government area of Kaduna State on January the 25th. Mrs. Ataga was later murdered by the kidnappers and her body found at Kakao village along the Kaduna Abuja Highway last week Saturday. Dr. Ataga, however, did not say if any ransom was paid before his children were released. The police are still giving situation reports on Wednesday's onslaught on the hideout of the Ansaro terrorist group in Kaduna State, where no fewer than 250 bandits were said to have been killed. Today, police authorities announced the death of another officer who was injured in the gun battle with the bandits, bringing to two the number of personnel lost by the police. The Deputy Inspector General of Police in charge of operations, Abdul Majid Ali, who read the IGP's riot act to the bandits, one that more trouble awaits them if they continue to terrorize residents and travelers along the Beningwari area of Kaduna State. He was speaking in Kajuru area of the state when he visited 12 injured officers who are still receiving treatment. Unfortunately, we lost another officer this morning, uh, making two. Apart from uh, Muhammad Abubakar, we lost Idris this morning, Sergeant Idris which is very, very unfortunate. But however, we'll continue to monitor the rest. Uh, but we visited the one at intensive uh, uh, care unit and it's also responding to treatment. It's, it's an operation that we continue to, to, to do. Uh, we have done a lot of the operation. This is uh, just a special one. Uh, this is not the first one. Uh, we have popped up so many areas. We have a lot of operation to carry out. More than, more than 50 places which have been marked. We have done our own investigation on them. We have done intelligence gathering on them. And uh, it's uh, something that will continue, it's a continuous exercise. Not that because of the casualty, they were thinking of withdrawing. No, we are bumping up, we continue the operation and will not stop until we clear all these bands out of our place. And staying with security in the north, the Sultan of Sokoto, Sa'ad Abubakar III, yesterday called on elders of the north not to abdicate their responsibilities to the youths, but should provide good leadership to them. The Sultan blames the establishment of the illegal security outfit and youth restiveness in the region on northern leaders and political elite, who he says have failed to provide good leadership. He's also distanced himself and northern traditional rulers from the newly launched Operation Shege Kafasa security outfit. The Sultan noted that they were not consulted by the coalition of northern groups which launched the regional security outfit in Kaduna State on Wednesday. You have to caution this youth by giving them good leadership. Not just political leadership, every good leadership. Now they have uh, launched their own, uh, I don't know what they call it. Eh? So, Shere Kafasa, meaning what? If our youth will now get able to do that, and we're meeting as northern elders, we don't know about it, we don't have a hand in it, then there's a very big problem. But this is the group that I have worked with in the last four years. I'm also surprised they decided to do this without coming to me. Because I've always asked them not to do A, B, C, D. I know them, they used to come to me in Abuja, in Sokoto, in Kaduna here. So it's a challenge to you, Northern Elders, to please see what you can do. Don't allow our youth to take over the leadership from you.
Moving away from security now, the Nigeria Labour Congress is insisting that the power sector privatization has failed and should be reviewed. NLC President Ayuba Waba explains that the union is disappointed with the entire process, noting that 80% of the entities privatized in the country have failed. Mr. Waba adds that the performance of the electricity sector is below expectation and that electricity tariff in the country is not affordable for people at the grassroots. Out of the privatized entities in Nigeria, 80% have failed. It's, on, it's a fact, it's on record. And I think we shouldn't be arguing over those things. It's to draw a line and say, yes, there is a problem somewhere. And particularly this very important critical infrastructure. No country in the world can develop if we don't fix the power sector. And for me, and that's why I said, if we are going in the wrong direction, we can always make a retreat. Nigerians are ready. It's just to provide the leadership and also ensure that corruption is eliminated. It's not that we are not ready. We are ready. So let's look at possibility of what will work. But to continue to go in the wrong direction and say that the privatization has succeeded. First, how can people pay bills when they don't even have the means or when the bills are too high? I, we have compared our bill with that of Britain. Even now, we are still paying higher. We need to look at our regulation. And also the issue of willingness of government, political will. If we are talking about more than $16 billion committed to a power sector that have failed, can't we recover the money? Meanwhile, the Katsina state government is taking steps to boost power supply in the state as the state governor signs a memorandum of understanding with the Transmission Company of Nigeria for the improvement of power supply in the state. Governor Aminu Masari and the special advisor to the governor on power and energy, Mansu Bakuri, signed on behalf of the state government, while the leader of the team, Mr. Bashir Hassan, and the TCN principal manager for transmission lines, signed on behalf of the company. The MOU is for the construction of two by 60 MVA transmission substations in Mashi LGA, as well as the extension of 132 DC transmission line from Daura local government area of the state to Kazare local government area in Jigawa state. And that's all from Abuja. Is back to you, Amarachi, in Lagos. Thanks a lot, Maokbe. Well, back here, President Mamadou Buhari has arrived in Addis Ababa, the Ethiopian capital, to attend the 33rd ordinary session of the Heads of State and Government of the African Union. It was received by the Ethiopian Prime Minister, Mr. Abiy Ahmed, and Nigeria's ambassador to the North African country, Ambassador Bankole Adeoye, among others. President Buhari and other leaders will be discussing how to silence the guns and create conducive conditions for Africa's development. He is also expected to take part in the 29th Forum of Heads of State and Government of Participating States of the African Peer Review Mechanism. The 27th session of the new Partnership for Africa's Development, NEPAD, and Heads of State and Government Orientation Committee. At the end of the AU summit on February 10th, President Buhari is scheduled to begin a state visit to Ethiopia on the 11th at the invitation of the Prime Minister and return to the country on February 12th. A new division of the Court of Appeal has finally been opened in Oka, Anambra State, and this is coming 29 years after the state was created. The state governor, Mr. Willy Obiano, says the establishment of the court will bring justice closer to the people. The court road area in Orca was a beehive of activities as dignitaries from within and outside the state converged on the premises of the Anambra Division of the Court of Appeal for the inauguration of the facility almost three decades after the state was created. An aerial view of the structure shows that everything needed for the spilled takeoff of the court has been put in place by the state government, and when the state governor arrived, the ceremony kicked off. In his opening remarks, the chief judge of Anambra State notes that bringing the appeal court will provide the much needed relief to litigants as well as learned counsel. The decision to commission a division of the Court of Appeal in Oka, Anambra State, is a welcome development that will bring relief to the teaming litigants in Anambra State and their learned counsel, who prior to this date traveled to Enugu to have their appeals heard. 
The president of the Court of Appeal commends Governor Willy Obiano for his unflinching support to the judiciary in the state, while the governor describes the sighting of the court in Anambra as another milestone. It is a fervent hope and prayer that after the commissioning, it would be possible for us to continue to operate in a very peaceful and conducive atmosphere and to do our duty to all sundry without fear or favor, affection or ill will, and in accordance with our oath of office. Considering the state of the federal rules across the country, this moves uh, becomes the, 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 the development out of necessity and a symbol of goodwill to our lawyers and citizens questioning for justice. The high point of the event is the inauguration of the edifice housed in the court by Justice Bukachua alongside Governor Obiano. The consensus here is that the establishment of the Federal Court of Appeal in Anambra will not only reposition the judiciary in the state, but also rekindle the hope of the people in the justice system.